In my previous videos about exposure, I've talked to you about what exposure is, that three things affect exposure, and I talked more in depth about shutter speed and about aperture. In this video, I'll go into more detail on how you can use ISO to control exposure. Before we do that, let's start out with a few reminders. Exposure is the amount of light let to reach the sensor of your camera. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO control exposure. You use each of these three things for different reasons. When you want to hold one of the things constant, like say you want a certain aperture to achieve a certain depth of field, or you want to freeze motion with a certain shutter speed, you'll need to make adjustments to one or both of the other things to control exposure. ISO is how sensitive to light your camera sensor is. Okay, we've talked about why you would adjust shutter speed and why you would adjust aperture, but we've yet to discuss why you would adjust ISO. Say you want a faster shutter speed, but your lens's aperture just won't go any wider, or you need to maintain a specific depth of field. You need more light, right? You could add some sort of artificial light, or you can increase the sensor's sensitivity to the available light so that it will pull more light in and increase your exposure. Here's my example. Say I'm taking photos at the pool table. I've got billiard balls darting about, but I don't have a whole ton of light. What do I do? I definitely need a super fast shutter speed to freeze the balls. If I don't use a sufficient shutter speed, I'll end up with something like this, with a bunch of motion blur. Kind of a cool photo, but not what I'm looking for. So I can't use shutter speed to increase my exposure. Now for aperture. I could use a wide aperture to let more light in, but here's the problem. My lens might not open up wide enough to get the light I need. Even at a wide aperture, I might end up with a photo like this, which is underexposed or too dark. In this case, actually way too dark. <laughs> I froze in motion, you can see in this photo, which was actually the one just prior that the cue ball is headed in, but still way too dark. So I'm left with ISO. I can't decrease my shutter speed, I can't widen my aperture, so I need to increase my ISO sensitivity. If I do, I can achieve a photo without motion blur, or with just the right of motion blur, depending on what you're after. I, however, wanted no motion blur, so ta-da! You might be thinking that these balls aren't actually in motion because, well, I froze the motion, but if you take a closer look at this little detail, you can see that the cue ball is actually in the air. <laughs> Remember, though, that there are trade-offs to adjusting each of the three things when controlling exposure. If you're increasing your ISO sensitivity, you will increase the amount of noise that shows up in your image. Depending on the camera, you might see a lot of noise or a little noise. And that noise isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's totally a style choice and a personal preference. Some people want completely crisp images every time. Absolutely no grain. However, some people, like me, don't mind a little bit of noise. And some people don't even mind the occasional grainy photo taken at a high ISO, especially if it means getting a shot that they otherwise wouldn't be able to capture. That wraps it up for controlling exposure with ISO. Let me know if you have any questions.